Okay, why don't we get started? Hey everyone, so, uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar, Lane Changing of Autonomous Vehicles in Mixed Traffic Environments, a Reinforcement Learning Approach. I'm John Fatinos, a project manager at the C2 Smart Center. We're a USDOT designated tier one university transportation center, and we're tasked with leveraging recent advances in big data and technology to solve today's most pressing urban mobility challenges. So I'm also, uh, I'm, I'm here with uh, a couple of our um, colleagues. I'm with uh, Lele Kui and uh, uh, Sayar Chakraborty and with uh, Professor Zhang Ping Zhang. So a few quick notes. First, I want to acknowledge that this research you're hearing about today is funded in part by the USDOT. Secondly, questions make the webinar more interesting for you, for me and the presenters. So if you're curious about anything we discussed today, I want to encourage you to, to use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. We'll devote about uh, 15 minutes or so at the end of the presentation for a question and answer. So I want to introduce our presenters today. Um, first is Lele Kui, a third year doctoral candidate in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at NYU. He's working under the supervision of Professor Zhang Ping Zhang. He received a BS in automation from Northwestern Polytechnic University in Shaanxi, China in 2016, and an MS in control science and engineering from Shanghai Zhao Tong University in Shanghai. His research interests are in reinforcement learning, adaptive dynamic programming, control theory, and their applications to robotics and intelligent transportation. Sayan Chakraborty is a first year doctoral candidate, also at the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at NYU, and also under the supervision of Professor Zhang Ping Zhang. He obtained his BTEC in electrical engineering from the National Institute of Technology in Silshar, India in 2017, and MTEC in electrical engineering with specialization in systems and control from the Indian Institute of Technology in Hyperabad, India in 2021. His interests are in data-driven control, adaptive dynamic programming, and their application to autonomous vehicles. And uh, they're joined by the illustrious Professor Zhang Ping Zheng, my, my colleague. And um, uh, yeah, so I think we'll, we'll get started. Um, Professor Chakraborty, please, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, Sayan, please take it away. Yeah, so hello everyone. Thanks for joining us. So today we'll be talking about the lane changing of autonomous vehicles and the mixed traffic environment, uh, reinforcement learning approach. So, uh, me and Lele would be uh, sharing the, uh, the presentation in two parts. So in the first part, I'll be talking about lane change problem. And uh, we'll discuss like why we do model-free control or model-based control. We'll discuss the, our main contributions in the work. Uh, we'll discuss the system modeling, problem definition, and the lane change decision making and uh, the uh, model-free and model-based controllers. And then uh, we will slowly go to the game scheduling part and then results and uh, a small simulation. For the second part, <laughs> the Lele will be the presenter. So here I start the first part. So the first part is about automated, automated lane changing control in mixed traffic and uh, adaptive dynamic programming approach. So let's see the components uh, that are involved in the lane changing. So first we have read to view communication among the vehicles. And then we have <laughs> the sensors which can be a GPS, radar, LiDAR, HD map, and camera. So data is collected by the sensors or the sensed by the sensors, and then it is uh, transferred to the lane change and decision-making module and motion planning module. And after the trajectories are planned, then trajectories are transferred to the vehicle control module, which is responsible for the vehicle control. So <laughs> the main aim of uh, the lane change is to maneuver our AV, which is the red vehicle here, to a target point, which is noted here in the figure. So in doing so, we need to maintain a safe distance from the surrounding vehicles. And we also need to guarantee passenger comfort and spend least amount of fuel. So yeah, here the question like why we do model-free over model-based. So the issues with uh, model-based techniques that we found in the literature are summarized here. So first is that uh, the model-based techniques in literature, it, uh, they are lane change, uh, techniques, it, it depends on the model. So the AV lane change performance, it uh, basically depends on the model accuracy. And some of the techniques in the literature, they need uh, high computation demand because they need to solve an optimization problem at every step. And some of them, they, they, they need to do some intuitive uh, tuning of their lane change model decision making, uh, which, uh, uh, which makes the uh, lane change model uh, uh, more susceptible to errors if the parameters are not tuned well. 
to overcome with these uh, issues, uh, we do model free lane changing, uh, which does not need uh, solving uh, optimization problem at each step or parameter tuning. Uh, we, we also don't need the vehicle information, or vehicle dimension information. And we, we do model free control uh, to, that can also handle any model uncertainties introduced. So here I summarize the main contributions of the work. So first we receive the data from online. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a data that's connected by the sensors. And uh, uh, with the collected data, we do model free optimal control. And this optimal controller, it guarantees uh, convergence and it can also handle uncertainties. Uh, so with, 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 with the data that we receive from the sensors, we also do model free range and decision making. And which are responsible to, main, uh, to maintain safe distance from the surrounding vehicle and also ensure safety for, from non cooperative surrounding vehicles. So, the system model is discussed now. So, first, I discuss the longitudinal model, which is a very simple model. Here, you can see that the states of my longitudinal model are longitudinal position and longitudinal velocity. And for the lateral model, uh, we use the uh, error. We use the uh, error, which are E1 and E2. So E1 is the uh, distance of the center of gravity from the center of the target lane. So it's a position error. And E2 is the orientation error, where psi is the orientation angle. So with the states for the lateral model are E1, E1 dot, E2, and E2 dot. And the input is the uh, front steering wheel angle. Uh, whereas for the longitudinal model, the input UL0 is, 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 is the uh, force in the acceleration time. So these are the data uh, these, uh, these are the uh, system matrices uh, ALA and BLA. So one important point is to like define what is a target point for our work. So a target point, a point TX TY that is placed in the in a, in a safe distance uh, from the leading vehicle is defined as the target point. So uh, the the problem we are trying to solve is defined here. So we need uh, the state and input information and also the definition of a target point. So here, after uh, we receive the uh, state information and the information about the target point, we try to design a model-free optimal controller that guarantees uh, convergence and that guarantees that our error E1 and E2 converges to zero, and which is also responsible for maintaining safe distance from the surrounding vehicles. Uh, another aspect of our model-free controller is that it can handle system it can handle uh, any varying system parameter. So, uh, so, so next, that's, so, uh, and in the next part, yeah, we, uh, we, we, we try to solve a model-free lane change decision making, uh, which is also done using, the, uh, using online data. So here, XAV, XLT, XFT, and XLC, and XFC are the uh, longitudinal positions of the AV and the surrounding vehicles, and TP is the target point. So once we have this data, we want to ensure that uh, the uh, lane changing is uh, safe from the non-cooperative vehicles. And also uh, this decision-making module is responsible for, uh, responsible to take a uh, safe distance from the surrounding vehicles. So we discussed the model for decision-making next. So you can see uh, a typical lane change scenario in this figure. So AV is the autonomous vehicle. L LC is the uh, lead vehicle in the current lane. FC is the following vehicle in the current lane. Uh, LT is the for uh, LT is the lead lead vehicle in the target lane, and FT is the following vehicle in the target lane. So you can see this is our safe. This is how we define our safe distance as SI equals to L plus HVI, where L is the length of the vehicle, H is the headway time, and VI are the respective velocities of of the vehicles. So you can see that our safe distance is scaled with the uh, velocity of each of these vehicles, which means that more, more safety is provided for our fast moving vehicles. So, so once we have this data, the longitudinal position of our vehicle and the surrounding vehicles, we try to see if uh, this inequality is whole. These inequalities basically define the safety from, of the AV from the surrounding vehicles. So we say that we can do a lane change only if an, uh, only if the safe distances so, uh, is, is only if the in these singularities are satisfied, which is the AV is at safe distance from each of my surrounding vehicles. So if at any point these inequalities are violated, then uh, we try to abort our lane, and in such a case, 
the target point is shifted to the current lane and the AV starts maneuvering back to the target lane. So here is the lane changing flow chart. So we collect data, we collect the original position of the vehicles and we check all these inequalities here. And if these inequalities are all satisfied, then we initiate lane change with the, with the definition of the target point, obviously. And once we initiate the lane change, we check the safe distance of the AV from the uh, surrounding vehicles in the target lane. And if these safe distance are satisfied, then uh, we continue the lane change uh, until and unless we reach the target lane or, or else we just continue the lane change. But if, this, if these inequalities are not satisfied, if my safe distance is, if my uh, AV is not, a, not at a safe distance from the surrounding vehicles, uh, at any point during the lane change, we, we just try to avoid the lane change and uh, define the target point in, in the current lane and then start all over again. Uh, we, not, we next discuss the model based and the model free controller design. So consider a system, exotico, so X plus BU. Uh, we assume that all the states are available, available for feedback and the, the system is stabilizable. We, we try to design a linear optimal controller law of, of the form U equals to minus KX that can minimize this cost function, where Q is a, a, a symmetric positive definite matrix and R is a uh, positive, uh, positive, uh, positive definite matrix, uh, and A to half is being observable. So, uh, so if if A and B are well known, then we can solve the uh, LQR problem uh, by by just solving for P for using this Riccati equation, uh, and then finding the optimal gain K star. Uh, but observe that uh, in the Riccati equation, the matrix P it appears nonlinear. So in general, it is uh, difficult to solve, especially when the matrix dimensions are large. So in the literature, many uh, iteration-based techniques are proposed to solve the Riccati equation, and one such is uh, uh, reproduced here. So it's called the clean iteration. So in clean iteration, we have policy evaluation and policy update. So in policy evaluation, so we try to solve this Lyapunov equation starting with uh, initial, initial stabilizing gain, gain cannot. And then we try to do policy update by solving for the controller K. We do this iteration again and again until and unless we have convergence. The properties of this iteration are that at every step, for every K, we have A minus BK Hurwitz. And this, con this second condition tells us that every P that we get at every iteration is bounded, which, which means that it has finite norm, and which, which means that uh, for, for, because of this boundedness of, of my matrix P, uh, the closed loop system is, 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 is Hurwitz. Uh, and in the limit, uh, the K converges to K optimal and P converges to P optimal. But uh, the problem, but, but, but the thing is that uh, to do plain iteration, we need the knowledge of A and B matrices. Okay, so now we discuss the model free controller design. So here, I just redefine the uh, uh, A matrix as A minus B K K. So here uh, we, uh, so along the solution of this uh, equation, this dynamic equation, and we use Feynman policy evaluation and update. And with some algebraic manipulation, we arrive at uh, this equation. So we basically do uh, the derivative of X transpose P X and we arrive at this equation. And uh, the one thing to notice is that uh, the, last, the last part of this equation is, uh, does not assume any knowledge of the A and B matrices. So from assuming knowledge of A, B matrices, we have come to a stage where uh, we don't need the knowledge of A and B matrices. So, and also observe that uh, the unknown in this equation, which are PK and KK plus one, they appear linearly. So we use the trick of uh, Kronecker product to arrive at these equations. It's just, just simply simple application of Kronecker product. And uh, we observe that uh, now we have separated out our known, known data or the known part and the unknown part of our equations. So the unknown parts are PK and KK plus one and the known parts are X and U, which is our data and which we will receive uh, from, from the sensors or from online data. So once we have the online data, we can define this uh, data matrices. And once these data, matrix data matrices are defined, the, uh, 
the uh, unknowns pk and pk, PK plus one can be solved in least square fashion like this where you can see that gamma k is uh, basically uh, obtained using the data matrices so there are some good properties of our model free controller design so we, we assume that uh, there is a sufficiently large integer l such that this rank condition hold and this rank condition is uh, consistent with the persistent uh, persistent excitation condition uh, in adaptive control and given that this assumption holds uh, and an initial stabilizing gain cannot is available with us uh, the sequences pi and ki they converge to the optimal values p star and k star respectively okay so here the model free uh, learning chart is uh, uh, is discussed so we first collect uh, the data with the initial stabilizing gain k naught. The e here is uh, a noise. So we, we use noise for the initial phase of collection, data collection. Then we uh, make, then we collect this data and store them into the data matrices. And then we, we compute the uh, known uh, p and k matrices uh, using the least square solution. And we do it iteratively until and unless the convergence is achieved. And once uh, our algorithm is converged, we use the updated gain k for our control. Uh, the, the important thing to notice in the lateral model is that uh, the, appearance, the appearance of the longitudinal velocity Vx in the uh, system matrix ALA. So because of this, uh, we our uh, lateral model becomes uh, a parameter varying model because uh, now because we, we, can, we can assume that Vx is constant, but uh, this assumption is not uh, practical because the AV it's it's almost difficult to for an AV to maintain a constant velocity throughout, and uh, also maintaining a constant original velocity can lead to uh, and it can can lead to more hazardous situations when uh, the uh, sounding vehicles accelerate or deaccelerate. The AV needs to maintain needs to uh, control the the VX according accordingly. So this VX cannot be constant, and because of this varying nature of the VX, the lateral model is a parameter varying, and hence. The controller design that we uh, that we discussed before it cannot be directly applied. So the question is, uh, what can we do? So the one way of tackling this problem is uh, using gain scheduling. So the technique of gain scheduling is uh, discussed follow as follows. So in, in in gain scheduling, we at good number of uh, operating points we call it alpha. The LTI approximation of the system is is obtained, and then at each of these approximate. Uh, it, for each of these uh, LTI uh, systems, we design uh, LTI controllers that guarantee stability and certain performance objectives. Uh, after we design these controllers for each of these operating points, we link these controllers together to obtain a single unified controller for the entire range of operation. So here, consider this linear, linear parameter varying system where A and B matrices are function of a parameter alpha. And we say that alpha is varying in this uh, in this interval, alpha naught to alpha n, which is a subset of R. So, and similarly, uh, we try to design a, a feedback control law, uh, which is uh, u equals to minus k alpha x. So now k is a function of the time varying parameter alpha. Uh, okay, for, note that for for us, alpha is v x. So. Uh, let uh, let alpha uh, let k alpha l and k alpha l plus one respectively denote the uh, gain matrices that can be computed at the two adjacent points alpha l and alpha l plus one. Then for each alpha which belongs to this interval, uh, we compute alpha k alpha as such using a simple interpolation method. So here the assumption is that the lateral dynamics is uh, stabilizable for all alpha in the set i. So here I discuss the uh, gain scheduling based model free learning. So uh, here, um, the uh, here we first uh, we specify the uh, velocity points where we want to do uh, where we want to freeze our system and design a, a LTI controller. So once this is defined, we uh, collect data and then send it to the lane changing module. The lane changing module decides whether to do a lane change or not. So in any case, we uh, in any case we collect the Velocity data, and uh, since uh, since again scheduling theory tells us that we need to freeze our system at uh, every operating point and then design a LTI controller, 
but in practice, it's difficult for a vehicle to maintain a constant velocity. So we define this uh, condition where we where we basically uh, trying to say that if the longitudinal velocity is some in, is in some vicinity of the uh, desired uh, operating point uh, with some error uh, epsilon one, uh, we say that uh, our AV has our AV is traveling with the velocity vxi, and then we start collecting data to learn for this vxi. So we, we keep on collecting data until and unless we have m samples available because. Uh, Again, uh, our, our AV can accelerate or deaccelerate. So maintaining this condition at each time in is also difficult. So we, we, we don't do learning until and unless we have enough samples available. So we just keep on collecting data whenever this condition is satisfied for a given VXI. So once uh, enough number of samples are available, uh, we pass it to the learning module and we learn for we learn the KI for the, the given VXI. So Unless the samples are available, we again start the process all over again. Uh, and uh, we, we continue doing this until and unless we learn uh, the controllers for each of the given operating points. So another thing to note for gain scheduling is that uh, it tells us that uh, or the gain scheduling wants that uh, at every operating point, the, the controllers that we obtain uh, are stabilizing uh, or make the closed system horowitz. And for us, uh, it's like uh, for every operating point, the uh, controllers that we obtain are optimal. So it, that condition is already satisfied. And another condition is that when we obtain the unified controller, uh, then the stability is guaranteed for the overall system. And for that, uh, the gain scheduling theory uh, says that the variation of the parameter is, uh, should the variation of the uh, parameter alpha should be small enough. But uh, here, here you notice that, uh, the variation of Vx is, uh, is simply the uh, longitudinal, uh, longitudinal acceleration. And since we can design controller for longitudinal acceleration, we can always say that uh, we can uh, maintain a low acceleration profile so that the unified controller stabilizes the overall system as well. So here are some results uh, that we have obtained uh, using uh, by, by uh, incorporating our uh, optimal controller, uh, optimal lane, uh, lane change decision making and gain scheduling in SUMO. So the, the QNR matrices are chosen as such. And for uh, learning, we use uh, exploration noise E and we use this controller with the uh, initial stabilizing, uh, uh, stabilizing gain K0. And the, uh, we learn uh, the optimal controller for every one unit change in the longitudinal velocity. So, so in the simulation, uh, as well, the VX varies from 20 meter per second to 22 meter per second. So we define the intervals as 20 to 21 meter per second and 21 to 22 meter per second. So this is alpha L and alpha L plus one. And so it implies that we learn uh, KI for three velocities. So 20 meter and 21 meter per second and 22 meter per second. So here are the results. So these are my initial stabilizing gain and uh, so the blue strips that we see in the figure velocities is, is, is the time interval where we do the learning for the given VXI. So the first VX one is for 20 meter per second. So the data that we collect for learning is only three seconds. So our controller can learn with just the three seconds uh, with, uh, with the data uh, worth three seconds. So we, we learn for all these velocities, VX1, VX2, and uh, VX3. And, uh, the plot here, it shows the convergence of uh, our controller uh, to the optimal gain, uh, K1 star, K2 star, and K3 star. So you can see that uh, we have obtained uh, convergence for all the gains. So here, uh, it shows the, the, the figure in the left, it shows the uh, error, error states. So this is basically the states of my lateral dynamics. You can see that with application of the optimal controller, the uh, lane changing time has reduced a lot. So here, delta, uh, del delta LC1 is the lane changing time with initial controller, and delta LC2 is the lane changing time with the, the new optimal controller. So you can see that the lane changing time has reduced to a sufficiently uh, large extent. And you can also see the convergence of the error states. Yeah, here, I, uh, here, the figure on the right, it shows the acceleration profile. So you can see that we could maintain uh, the acceleration magnitude to quite low. 
so that uh, our gain scheduling controller becomes valid for the overall system. So here it shows the uh, about lane change about, uh, so these two figures uh, uh, shows the efficacy of the uh, lane change decision making module. So you can see that uh, here in the figure in the left, it shows the lane abortion. So to start with, uh, our uh, AV was not at the safe distance from uh, the uh, follower in the target lane. So whenever the safe distance started, uh, whenever the AV start, uh, started, started placing itself at a safe distance from the following vehicle, we started the lane so we started lane change, but suddenly the FT, the follower in the target lane, uh, it came very close to the AV. So here the dotted line shows the safe distance. So the AV started lane changing. Uh, so AV started uh, lane abortion. So uh, the, and it continued lane abortion and came back to the original lane. Uh, sorry, uh, until and unless the safe distance uh, again started satisfying. So once the safe once the AV was at a safe distance from the following the target lane, the lane change started again. So this scenario is also depicted here in the velocity plot. So you can see that the FT it started uh, accelerating a lot as compared to the uh, AV. So yeah, so at this point, the AV aborted the lane change and uh, maybe around again 23 seconds, the lane, the AV started the lane changing. So here are some simul simulations. So, so the first simul 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 simulation with, uh, is, is based on the uh, gain scheduling based optimal controller learning. So we started. So the red vehicle is the AV and the surrounding vehicles are human driven. So you can see that, uh, yeah, so so to start with uh, our controller, our AV has learned the controller for VX20. So now it is in 21. Uh, yeah, it is already learned for VX21. Uh, and okay, now it's in uh, 22. Now the VX is 22 and yeah, it has uh, learned the uh, controller for uh, VX 22 and is doing the lane change. Again. You can see the lane change time here. So initially we have lane change time of eight seconds and then we have the lane change time of four, four, four seconds, almost four seconds. And you can uh, see that our uh, uh, learning algorithm does not take much iteration, it just learns in eight iterations. So with just uh, three seconds worth of data. So next I show is the simul simulation for, uh, next I show the simul simulation for uh, lane abortion. So you can see that the AV is trying to lane change, but uh, this vehicle, this follower vehicle target then is coming very close to AV. So now the AV has aborted the lane change and it's coming back to the original lane. And it will wait until the safe distance uh, appears again. Let's give it some time. Yeah, so once the safe distance appears, then uh, my AV started the lane change again, and it uh, is now changing the lane to the target lane. Okay. So now my AV has played itself in the target lane. So uh, to summarize, the, so this is what we have done for this part. So we have uh, designed an optimal model free controller. We have designed a data driven. Yeah, we have designed a data-driven uh, optimal model, model free controller and we have designed a data-driven lane changing model. And also we have uh, designed a gain scheduling controller using this uh, optimal data-driven controller so that uh, our algorithm or our method can handle uh, uncertainties in, in the model or any non-linearities non in the model. And we have applied each of these uh, uh, proposed techniques in, uh, in, in some simulation for validation. So the part two will be taken over by uh, Lele. So. Okay, uh, I'll share my screen and uh, to continue talk about uh, the second part of uh, my presentation. Okay, so. Okay. You're all set, okay. you just need to, yep, perfect. Okay, okay, oh, so good. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So here I'm going to uh, present the second part of our presentation, uh, combined longitudinal and the lateral control of autonomous vehicles based on reinforcement learning. And uh, uh, this slide shows the introduction to the research. 
So the increase in the number of vehicles challenges the capability of the existing transportation infrastructure. So in order to solve the congestion problem, but one way is to increase, increase road, capability road capability by reducing the inter-vehicle distance. For street highway, so we can, for street uh, road, so we can apply adaptive cruise control or cooperative adaptive cruise control uh, to solve the longitudinal control problem with the help of way to way communication. However, when roads are curved, the vehicle should not only maintain a desired inter-vehicle distance, but also stay in the lane. So this can be showed by the combined longitudinal and lateral control. Uh, this figure shows the longitudinal control. So the aim of the longitudinal control is to keep a desired safe distance from the preceding vehicle. And this figure shows the uh, lateral control. So the aim of the lateral control is to uh, let the vehicle move along the reference path. In order to solve the combined longitudinal and the lateral control problem, so the first, first method is to decompose uh, the, the whole system into two subsystems, longitudinal subsystem and the lateral subsystem. Then for longitudinal subsystem, we can apply ACC or CACC method to control the autonomous vehicle. And uh, for lateral control, some link keeping control can be applied, uh, like uh, uh, in order to detect the deviation between the autonomous vehicle and the, uh, and the desired lane, some magnetic marker system or the vision-based system can be applied. However, there are some disadvantages for these two systems, like for the magnetic marker system, it is too, uh, too expensive to install. And also for the vision-based system, when road condition is poor, like uh, this figure, or there are some traffic congestions, uh, uh, for these two scenarios, it is hard for autonomous vehicle to detect the link clearly. So in order to solve the aforementioned link detection problem, some authors proposed uh, some car following method. So this method is to follow, like let the leading, uh, let the following vehicle to uh, follow the leading vehicle directly. However, uh, when the following vehicle checks the leading vehicle directly, the following vehicle will cut the edge of the will cut the edge of the road. Uh, 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 so, in order to overcome this cutting edge limitation, the extended look ahead approach is proposed. The main idea of the extended look ahead approach is that the following vehicle can check the virtual point. Uh, S, which is perpendicular to the direction of the leading vehicle L, instead of checking the leading vehicle directly. So here, uh, when the following vehicle is moving at a high speed, so firstly, the nonlinear dynamics of the autonomous vehicle cannot be uh, ignored. Further, in reality, it is hard to get an accurate dynamic model due to the complex mechanical structure of the autonomous vehicle. Besides, in order to reduce the energy of fuel consumption and improve the transient performance of the flow loop system, the optimality of the controller should also be considered. So all this uh, aforementioned problem can be solved by the uh, state-of-art reinforcement learning technique. So compared with the conventional reinforcement learning algorithm, the adaptive Dynamic programming can guarantee the safety and the stability of the autonomous uh, vehicle, which is significant for transportation. And also the convergence of the algorithm can also be guaranteed. Besides, the output regulation technique can solve the tracking performance, can, can solve tracking problem of the vehicle. So here we adopt adaptive dynamic programming uh, to solve the aforementioned three open problems. Uh, here I'm going to uh, talk about the problem formulation and the dynamic modeling of the uh, system. So here uh, the vehicle L is the leading vehicle and F is the following vehicle. So uh, we assume that the leading vehicle is an ideal unicycle kinematic model. Besides, the, the following vehicle's dynamic is unknown to us. So with, two, with these two conditions, the specific problem in this paper is to find an optimal controller, which can keep the desired distance from the uh, preceding, uh, from leading vehicle and also achieve the link keeping. 
Uh, so here uh, it shows the dynamic modeling of the uh, vehicle. So firstly, we define the states of the systems. Here XP is related to the position of the autonomous vehicle, including X coordinate, Y coordinate, and uh, uh, the yaw angle. XV is related to the velocity of the vehicle, including the velocity along X and Y coordinates, and also the yaw angular velocity. Uh, and uh, and then according to the kinematics, the derivative of XP can be expressed as this form. So X dot and Y dot and Phi dot can be expressed as this equation. Finally, considering the tire force, the dynamic, dynamics of the vehicle can be derived as this form. Uh, here, uh, U is, so here U is the driving input. It includes the steering angle and the torques of the left and the right angles. After obtaining the dynamic model of the follow, following vehicle, here we, uh, here we derive the error system. Firstly, we define the position error as the difference between the look ahead point each of the uh, following vehicle and the virtual point S. So then the velocity error is defined as the difference between the desired velocity and the uh, velocity of the autonomous vehicle. Finally, according to the aforementioned dynamic model, the error system can be uh, written as this form. So here, in order to get the, in order to calculate uh, this uh, uh, control input the UE, the, uh, the following regulator equation has to be showed. So here, I'm going to talk about the model-based policy iteration. Uh, in order to minimize the fuel consumption and the improve the transient performance of the closed loop system. So uh, we have to show this uh, problem when, uh, where uh, the constraints is the aforementioned error system. So here, uh, policy iteration is an effective way to solve this problem. Here, uh, actually here we use the, uh, the policy iteration for nonlinear system. Uh, this is different uh, from Sanya's work uh, uh, of policy iteration for a uh, linear system. So here policy evaluation is to calculate the value function of the control policy UE. And then policy update is to improve the control policy according to the uh, given value function. Uh, this policy iteration algorithm ca can give us a sequence of admissible controller, which implies that uh, the closed loop system is uh, stable. Besides the convergence of the algorithm to the optimal value can also be uh, guaranteed. Here in both uh, policy evaluation step and policy update step, well, we can see that the accurate dynamic model of the system is required. Besides, we have to show this non-trivial partial differential equation. So in practice, it is hard to obtain the accurate model of the system. And when, when, when the autonomous vehicle is running, a large volume of data will be generated. So here we propose a data-driven policy iteration method to solve this kind of uh, problem. Uh, so here we decompose our uh, data-driven method into two phases. So firstly, we, uh, for the uh, first phase, uh, we have to solve the aforementioned regulator equation. So with the dynamic model of the following week, we can obtain uh, this equation. Uh, then the approximation of F and G uh, can be obtained uh, by minimizing the approximation error, you say the uh, approximation error epsilon, then the desired driving inputs can be calculated according to the uh, pre, uh, aforementioned the regulator equation. So this is the, how to solve the regulator equation by the data-driven method. So uh, for the second phase of our data-driven policy iteration, so we will get the policy evaluation and the policy update results by minimizing this error, this approximation error sign. Here, this is the approximation error of the, uh, this is the approximation of the value function. And this is the approximation of the updated uh, control policy. So all the required data in this equation can be collected from the autonomous vehicle. So here, this block diagram shows the uh, frameworks of the data-driven policy iteration. Here, uh, car following controller uh, will give the control signal U 
uh, including the uh, steering angle and the torques of each wheel to the uh, following vehicle with the feedback uh, of the vehicle states and also the reference signal of the leading vehicle. Uh, with the reference signal from the leading vehicle, the states of the following vehicle and the driving inputs, the policy evaluation model can evaluate the performance of the current controller. And then the policy is updated to improve the performance of the controller. So this is the whole diagram of our uh, nonlinear policy iteration for uh, to, to handle the uh, tracking performance, to handle the tracking problem of our uh, search. Okay, uh, this slide shows the simulation results. So here we will test our algorithm in a, a circle road. Uh, firstly, the cost function is defined as its quadratic form. Here Q is the equal to five multiplying uh, identity matrix and R is set as an identity matrix. And uh, these two plots shows the collected data from the leading vehicle and uh, from the following vehicle respectively, re respectively. So here for the leading vehicle, we need to collect the uh, position information and uh, your information, uh, velocity information and your, velo your angular velocity information uh, for the leading vehicle. And for the following vehicle, we need to also uh, collect the x, y coordinates and the phi is the, this is the, uh, your angle of the following vehicle and also the velocity of the uh, uh, following vehicle and the, your angular velocity of the following vehicle. Then this 10 seconds data are collected from these two vehicles and uh, uh, is applied to train the, our ADP controller. This slide shows, uh, showing the test results for the circle road. So the figures in the first row shows the results of the ADP controller. And the figures in the second row shows the results of the initial controller. So from this two, uh, from this two zoom in figure, from this zoom in uh, subplots, we can see that uh, for both ADP controller and the initial controller, the states, uh, all, uh, the, sta the initial states, the initial states of the system is the same. Or uh, uh, for both these two uh, controllers, the, the system starts from the same initial uh, from the same initial states. Uh, then uh, this uh, this one shows the uh, prediction error of the ADP controller, and then this one shows the tracking uh, shows the velocity tracking error of the. ADP controller, we can see that uh, uh, these two errors can move smoothly to the zero. And also uh, we can see that there is no chattering uh, during the, during the transient, uh, transient uh, stage. Also, we can see that this is the uh, results of the initial controller. We can see that uh, during the transient stage, uh, this pro uh, there are some chatterings and also uh, the the errors move very slowly to the uh, equilibrium of the system. And also we can compare the value of the cost for these two different uh, controllers. We can see that for the ADP controller, uh, the, cost function, the cost value for the aforementioned cost function is uh, uh, equal to uh, two multiple 10 to the power three. But for the initial controller, this cost is uh, uh, one point nine to uh, multiplying ten to the power five, and therefore our ADP the cost cost value for our ADP controller is much smaller than that of the uh, initial controller. Uh, this can also uh, demonstrate that uh, our ADP controller can reduce the cost, reduce the predefined cost of the uh, system. Okay. Uh, next, I will show the video of the simulation results. Okay, so here uh, uh, the green one is the leading vehicle and this one is the red one is the following vehicle. And we can see that uh, by, the, by our ADP controller, the following vehicle can keep the, this uh, safe distance from the leading vehicle. And also this uh, following vehicle can keep the desired link all the time.
Okay, that's uh, that's my presentation. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you, Wei and thank you, um, Sir Sean. I uh, I just want to open this up to the audience to see if anyone has any questions. You can feel free to drop them into the Q and A, and I'll read them out loud to our presenters today. In the meantime, I was wondering um, if if either of you or Professor Zhang could talk a little bit more about what's what's coming next for this research or what other inquiries you're pursuing and why you're excited about it. Okay, John, okay. Well, you know, so what do we plan to do okay, in the future, in the immediate future, okay, you know, we really want to just look at the, the safety issue. So how to develop safety aware learning based control approaches for you know CAVs, especially you know the little changing tasks. So I think uh, the these two gentlemen, you know, so especially Sanya will take lead on this research. That's uh, you know a uh, you know crucial topic for his PhD research, you know. And of, of course we are going to work with uh, members of C2 Smart. Center and uh, hopefully we can develop okay, a more joint research with uh, you know companies or maybe others through NSF for okay, you know, grants you know. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, we're looking forward to seeing what comes next, especially uh, you know one day seeing how these these algorithms are implemented in in a real world setting. That's true. Yeah. So if you enjoyed this webinar, please uh, definitely follow the CG Smart Center on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, and join our mailing list. Um, I want to just extend a warm thank you to Lele Kui and Sayan Chakraborty, as well as Professor Zhang Ping Zhang. I, I cut your acknowledgement short a little bit, Professor Zhang, but um, Professor Zhang is known for his contributions to stability and control of interconnected nonlinear systems. And he's a key contributor to the nonlinear small game theory. And uh, we're very excited that he's going to be uh, joining the center again as a principal investigator in the coming year. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us and enjoy the rest of your Monday. Thank you.